How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and if you've been around the block a few times, you may have noticed on occasion that some people have the dreaded message at the bottom right of Windows that tells them that they have not activated Windows yet, or it's a non-genuine version and that they need to buy a license of Windows. But what exactly are the consequences of not activating Windows? That's what we're gonna go over today and it might be pretty interesting to you. Before we get started, as usual, I'm gonna plug my Instagram account. I post hilarious jokes on there. God forbid, don't go over there. If you have a heart condition, you're gonna literally die from laughing so hard. I also post pretty cool tech-related stuff every once in a while, so it should be worth it. It's just at Theojo over on Instagram. Anyway, what exactly does happen if you refuse to activate Windows right away or just never do it? The answer is going to heavily depend on which version of Windows you're running, and we can obviously start with Windows 10 because it's the most recent version, but we can also go over Windows 8, Windows 7, even though that's gonna be going away very soon, and of course, for historical purposes, we can talk about Vista and XP. So first off, what exactly happens when you don't activate Windows 10? Well, the answer is really not much. And in previous versions, there was like a grace period of about 30 days, where before that, there was no issue, it would run like normal, but after 30 days, things would get a bit screwy, and we're gonna get to these. But on Windows 10, there is no grace period. It's all the same, whether Windows is just activated or not, it's one or the other, but there aren't really that many consequences or penalties if Windows 10 is not activated. The first, of course, is the most obvious. It'll show at the bottom right on the wallpaper that you have not activated Windows yet. It'll tell you to do that. Also, if you go into the settings at the bottom, the window will also tell you that you need to activate Windows and that it's not activated. Neither of these are going to actually impair your usage of Windows. And besides those, really the only thing you actually would notice, the only limitation imposed on you, is that you can't really customize Windows in any way. So you can't do custom taskbar colors, you can't set a custom Windows desktop background, you can't do anything in the personalization settings. So depending on who you are, these penalties might not even be something you notice really, but obviously I would not recommend this. You should always pay for what you use, otherwise the economy would not be in good hands if everyone just stole everything. But if you are, for whatever reason, running Windows 10, not activated, probably not gonna be any big issues. And towards the end of the video, I can talk about why I personally think there are so few limitations on non-activated versions of Windows, but we'll get to that later. So on to Windows 8, things are kind of similar to Windows 10 in that there's no grace period. It's either one or the other, activated or non-activated, and you get a few penalties if it's not activated, but it is a little bit more annoying than on Windows 10. As with every version of Windows, again, you're gonna see that little notification on the bottom right of the desktop telling you it's not activated, but you'll also get some other notifications like in the actions panel, it'll show you like a little notification saying, hey, it's not activated, and also again in the PC settings, it'll tell you the same thing to activate. And just like with Windows 10, it's the same deal with personalization. There are no settings you can do with personalization, no app colors, desktop backgrounds, things like the lock screen, wallpaper, you can't change account icons, that sort of thing, that's all the same, no customization. So really the only main difference, which is probably the most annoying, is that every six hours or so, you will get a full screen activation prompt that will pop up and tell you, hey, you have an activated Windows, just a quick reminder, and that should overlay over anything you're doing, which could be very, very annoying depending on what you're doing. If you're uh, like on a conference call or something and you're doing a screen share, then uh, you know, if the activation prompt pops up, that might be a bit embarrassing. Or maybe if you're playing a video game and you're about to clutch the round and it pops up and you die, that could also be annoying. So that is something that you have to be aware of every six hours might not be that annoying, but of course we know that with Windows, whether it's time to restart the computer automatically or this pop-up, it tends to happen at the worst possible time. But other than those annoyances, there really isn't anything that will prevent you from using Windows 8. So moving on to Windows 7, Windows 7 was actually the last version of Windows that had a grace period, and it actually had several different segments of grace periods, and with the last one, it gets to the point where it actually does possibly impair your usage of Windows, and we'll get to that in a second. So what would happen though is, 
for the first three days, if you don't activate Windows, pretty much nothing happens. There's like a little icon in the system tray that is a prompt to activate Windows, but other than that, you really wouldn't even notice. Next, for days three through 27, you're going to get a daily pop-up message from the taskbar telling you to activate Windows. But again, that's once a day, you can just close that out. You won't really notice anything. But after the 27th day and for the next three days, so through the final part of the grace period, it'll actually pop up every four hours from the taskbar. So it's really trying to remind you. But again, nothing really impairing in Windows. You can just close it out. After 30 days though, they really start to drop the hammer on you. So first of all, you're going to every single hour get a pop-up, the same one you've been getting, telling you to activate Windows. So that could get annoying if it's every single hour. And also, anytime you open up the control panel, there will also be a message that you have not activated and prompt you to do that. But probably the two biggest penalties, first of all, you can change your desktop background, but it will revert to a black background every single hour. So you may as well not be able to change the desktop background, and that could get extremely annoying. The other biggest penalty possibly is that you will not be able to install system updates at all. So I don't know if this includes security updates and critical updates. It might include just like super essential ones, but feature updates definitely would not be able to be installed. So don't expect anything from that. And that is something that potentially would be detrimental and something that would probably be worth it for a lot of people to upgrade if you want the latest secure version of Windows. But besides those three penalties, the system updates, the wallpaper, and the annoying pop-ups, there really isn't anything actually stopping you from using Windows 7 after that grace period. Next up, we have Windows Vista, which is obviously ancient history these days, but it's still interesting to talk about because Windows Vista was a bit more hardcore when it came to the penalties. It's kind of interesting. And the penalties for Vista actually changed at one point. So there was one set of penalties for the first version of Windows Vista release, the RTM release to manufacture, and then after Service Pack 1, it changed the penalties. So we'll go over both. So with the original release of Windows Vista, you had a 30-day grace period where pretty much nothing happened happened, and then after that, there was a reduced functionality mode, which had some pretty hardcore penalties. The first wasn't really a big deal. It would not let you play built-in games, so I don't think anyone really cared about Minesweeper or Solitaire or whatever. The next penalty was that there were no premium features in Vista. The first of which was not allowed was the Aero Glass theme, so that was kind of like the little blurry modern theme that was introdu introduced in Vista and then kind of polished in the later versions. Also, you could not get access to ReadyBoost or BitLocker, but if you didn't really use those, features, you probably wouldn't have noticed. But the third one, definitely you would have. So the third penalty, which was definitely the most extreme, was that you would not be allowed to stay logged into Windows Vista for more than an hour. It would actually log you out. And I believe, I'm not really sure if this is the truth, I think it would actually shut down Windows completely. So it would either force you to log in again or possibly even shut down your computer completely. So if you did not activate Windows, really you couldn't use the computer in any meaningful way. Now, after Vista Service Pack 1, Microsoft did chill out a little bit with the penalties. So there's still the 30 day grace period, but you still could technically keep using Windows. It did not force you to log out every single hour like it did before, but it removed the ability to personalize your computer, which is what was carried forward into latest versions. And it would also pop up periodically a thing telling you to activate as soon as you could. However, the most extreme penalty in this case was that it did not allow you to install any Windows updates except critical updates. So this would presumably be for security updates, but if there were any like bug fixes or something or like feature updates, then you could not get those if you did not have activated version of Windows. Now, finally, onto Windows XP. This one had by far the most extreme penalty that we've talked about in this video, and that is that after the 30-day grace period, you could not use Windows at all. It wouldn't let you boot into Windows. You had to activate it or it would not work. So none of this business about annoying pop-ups and trying to coax you into do it by reducing your personalization, it was either you activate or you're screwed. Now, you might be wondering at this point why Microsoft chilled out and went more lenient over the years 
because with Windows XP, obviously, it was like, you can't use it at all. And then now we get to the point with Windows 10, where there's very little penalty at all. You can use it as much as you want. You just can't customize it at all. So why did Microsoft do this? Now, I'm gonna give my opinion, and obviously this is not gonna be 100% correct. So don't expect this to be totally true. I could be wrong, but I do believe this is also gonna be a similar reason to why Microsoft offered the free upgrade to Windows 10 in the past years. So I think it's gonna be the same reason why they pretty much just let you use it without activating. Now, the first thing to note is I expect that Microsoft makes by far most of their money from Windows activations from companies like manufacturers. They're building lots and lots of computers and they're buying these licenses in bulk and then putting them on all their computers. I think a very small, small fraction of Windows keys are being sold directly to consumers. So you already have a small percentage of people who are building new computers or actually do want to buy a key to upgrade their version of Windows and put it on their computer themselves. And that's such a small percentage. And probably most of those people are not pirating anyways. If you're building a computer, most people pay for the key. And so it's probably such a small percentage of small percentage of people that are actually pirating that it's almost not even worth it pursuing those people and spending the money trying to get around them when they'll probably be able to circumvent it anyway when they're making so much money from legitimate users. And I think that the people who are willing to pirate Windows and go through all that trouble to not be able to customize it and they really don't want to pay that money, then they are the people who are going to circumvent it anyway. So they're probably not going to recover much money at all from forcing people to try and activate if they haven't. And the other reason, which I think is the same reason they released a free upgrade to Windows 10, is that they just want as many people using Windows and Windows 10 in particular as possible. And that way they can monetize their Windows installations in other ways, such as people running Microsoft Office or running things like OneDrive or just buying from the Windows Store, things like that. They figure, look, if these people are gonna pirate Windows and they're not gonna buy our $100 key, we're probably not gonna make any money off them anyway. We may as well just let them use Windows, obviously in an inferior capacity, so no customization. We have to you know, give them some incentive, but hopefully we'll get some money out of them in other ways. And of course, it is entirely possible that they will you know, get as many people using Windows 10 as possible, and then they'll just change that as the final version of Windows, like I kind of think what they're moving towards. Instead of Windows 10, it'll just be Windows, everyone will be using Windows, and at that point, they could start implementing more extreme penalties, really forcing people to ap activate if they haven't already. So they could just let people on, get them addicted to Windows, and then force them to activate later. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but it's possible. So I think that pretty much answers it. If you're not gonna activate Windows 10, what happens? The answer is really not much but you still should really do it. So that's it. If you guys want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here you can click on. If you want to subscribe and make a couple new videos a week, should be worth it. And it'll let us know down in the comments what you think. If you run an activated version of Windows or maybe you were previously a pirate and you're not anymore, let us know why. So anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope to see you again and have a good one.